number of things to talk about with you this morning. Um, we are working, as Ron said, on the social distancing thing. I got questioned by someone uh, this week about why everybody's not wearing a mask. And so I want to set that straight for everybody in case anyone should ask you what's going on here. We are trusting you to social distance. We, uh, the lawyer uh, said that we should wear a mask from the parking lot into the meeting room and then we're free to take it off. My thoughts on all of that is I will encourage you to do what needs to be done, but I am not going to enforce that. I'm not going to chase you out of here if you don't do it. Uh, we have enough room in the church. If someone wants to come to church and they're afraid to be in the sanctuary with everybody and without a mask, we have two other rooms that they can sit in. We have the signal in the uh, fellowship hall, and we also have the capability of turning on the television in the Bates room. So if someone requires uh, special uh, treatment, I'm fine with that. I want you all to be comfortable. I don't want anybody feeling like they're compelled to come or they have to take a risk to come. I want you to come as you feel comfortable and feel led and uh, we will do our very best to make it a safe environment for all of you. Uh, we are trusting God to see us through. And, uh, you know, different ones of us are more vulnerable than others. And so if you'd like to wear a mask, please do. And, and if not, that's up to you as well. Our July Missionary of the Month is Atlantic, Rescues, Atlantic City Rescue Mission. As I said last week, these, uh, they can kind of be rough places but they're places where the gospel is shared with people who have really come to the end of themselves. And they're very valuable in proclaiming the gospel. Oftentimes, it's not until someone does come to the end of themselves that uh, they're really ready to accept Christ as the Lord of their lives. But we know that this is the gospel and uh, we're grateful for the, for the ones who proclaim it on the streets of Atlantic City. Um, as far as uh, praise reports, I asked you last week to pray for my daughter Sarah. She needs a car for herself and her four children. And uh, it's my joy to tell you that that need was met, that someone came along and made provision for Sarah to get a nice vehicle. So she's in the process of doing that. God is real. He answers prayers. He puts it on the heart of his people to give. And when all of that happened, it's a wonderful testament of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so that need was met. And I am very grateful as is Sarah and Carolyn. I also want to thank you for praying for Carolyn's needs. She was in quite a bit of pain a couple of weeks ago and that pain has subsided. And so thank you for those prayers as well. Uh, we've been praying for Ariana, uh, Allie's great-granddaughter, and from what I understand she's doing well. There was uh, some concern over some brain bleeding, which sounds horrible, but evidently it's not as bad as it sounds. And so continue to keep her in prayer. The baby's now 12 and a half inches long. There was a premature baby, but she, her lungs are working and uh, so God is hearing prayers on her behalf. So we want to continue to pray for them. Uh, Fran Phillips has had some prayers answered. She got her air conditioner fixed and her hot water heater's being fixed. Sometimes those basic needs are what's needed the most. And so we are grateful for those who pray for Fran and we're looking forward to her joining us, rejoining us soon. Uh, so we'll continue to pray. Uh, for her. Um, Tom Manzo, I talked to Tom Manzo. He really wants to be in church. He feels great except for his back is in a lot of pain. He's been going to a chiropractor three times a week, but he still is not comfortable sitting up. He's got to lay flat on his back. So he said to thank you all for your prayers and uh, he will be here as soon as possible. I think he's going to talk to a surgeon tomorrow to see what else can be done that he might be back in fellowship 
but he misses you when he's not here and not in fellowship. So uh, that's where it's at with Tom. Do any of you have praise reports? Anybody have a testimony of something God did in your life that you want to give him the praise for uh, in front of others? Is there, excuse me, anybody here that has a testimony that they'd like to share? Oh, kind of quiet. Bob? I'd like to explain to my wife. She fell down last Tuesday in the kitchen. And she called her call for me, and I know what would happen. I went out there, she lay on the floor. And I had to go get my neighbor help me get her up. And then after I got her up, she asked me, would I take her to the hospital? And I did so, and she was in there now. She, her left foot, she broke her, all her little toes, her left foot was falling down. I appreciate it. Okay, we will continue to pray for Charlotte. She had a fall. She broke her toes in her left foot and she is in the hospital. So let's continue to pray for peace for her and for Bob and for healing as well. Someone else, are there any other praises that you want to share this morning? Bill? Yeah, I'd just like to uh, thank God for all the stuff that we take for granted. Like when you just wake up every morning and be healthy and uh, allow us to sit in a comfortable air conditioned environment. We also just got our hot water heater replaced and uh, thank God for allowing us to be able to do that. And uh, I'm just grateful for everything that I have and everything God's done for us. And, and I, uh, I just hope that someone we can serve them. Good. It's great to have you and Cam back in fellowship with us this morning. Anyone else? Okay, uh, Denise. I just wanted to say that um, I thank everyone for their prayers for my father-in-law. There was um, like a specific situation physically that he was going through with his treatments for cancer last week that I didn't even mention here, but um, I, I told him that, you know, I, I mentioned him in church and everyone, you know, was praying for him. And he sort of teared up and got really, you know, happy about mm -hmm. to hear that. And then um, this particular situation that he was struggling with in his treatments actually got better. It cleared up okay. during the week. So okay. I praise God because I know that he knows that God heard those prayers. And that even though I didn't mention specific about a thing that he needed prayer for in that situation, God knew and God hears our prayers and God specifically answers our prayers even when we don't know that specific thing, just lifting somebody up in prayer. And also my dad, who has dialysis three times a week, he was having a rough week this week and his blood pressure dropped dangerously low every time he went for dialysis this week and he ended up in the emergency room on Friday. I got a call while I was at work and because you can't go to the emergency room now, I was like, what do I do? So I just stayed at work and waited and then um, my dad called me within, I don't know, an hour and a half or so, and said, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm fine, your, your son's coming to pick me up, and I'm like, oh, okay, like, I was glad to hear his voice and glad to hear that he was okay, and I just, you know, I thank God that he took care of my dad in that situation, but, um, you know, if everybody could just remember to keep my dad in prayer that this week will not be such a rough week, because it was pretty scary for him. Very good. The Bible says 